So hi everyone and welcome. We're so thrilled to have this first discussion of the provocations, um, bringing back here with us Johannes Beringer, Sarah Fdulialawi and Garrett Johnson. And the idea today is that, you know, a couple of years ago, we launched a call for provocations on the question of what escapes computation in interactive performance. And several people submitted provocations, uh, textual video images that you can view online. And we wanted to bring back some of the uh, provocateurs to discuss their provocations with one another and really to read these provocations through one another for points of convergence and divergence for differences that matter in their perspectives. Um, so the structure today is that each person will briefly um, reflect back on their provocation and share it with you, and then we'll have some discussion. Uh, my name's Tioma Nakarado, and uh, John McCallum and Jessica Reiko are here also facilitating. So we will uh, only jump in towards the end with some questions to join the conversation. So I'm going to pass it over to Sarah to begin. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm going to read my provocation. What escapes computation in artistic performance is almost everything. From rich experiences, intentions, movement in continuous space and time, computation makes numerical representation, and these are incomplete snapshots of a larger story. Rather than the attempt to capture faithfully the phenomena in stake, computation should be a constrained frame that generates few possibilities and defamiliarizes the body. So what escapes computation in artistic performance is the whole conversation on politics and inclusion. Computation doesn't like outliers, nor special cases. It normalizes based on given data. Computation doesn't engage in social conversation, nor in what our future should look like. What escapes computation is the body with skin, flesh, and bones. My body that needs to sleep, to eat, and to have sex, my body that ages, my body that gets tired, my body that can only flex up to its limits, my body that is not isolated, my body that learns and grows, my body that exists in society for the years it has, my body that took time to become and that will take time to end, my body that beholds my experiences, feelings, fears, skills, and weaknesses, my body is where artistic performance emerges, my body is so human with all its cells and their connections, and that is what escapes computation. So that was two years ago, two or three years ago, and it's still relevant for me today, I would say. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. And Johannes, you're going to share next? Yes, <clears throat> um, thank you. Perhaps not, not necessary to repeat what I said in 2018. Uh, I wrote it from my practice as a choreographer and tried to answer the questions by reflecting on how choreography relates to newer advanced technologies that extract data or um, respond to or even regulate what is going to be extracted, perceived, manipulated in real time. I was thinking interactivity as a relationship to systems. So um, of course, I also thought that as a dancer or as a performer within systems that can compute or extract data, uh, I, I have to somehow think through my flesh body in the way Sarah so beautifully ad addresses the flesh body and uh, our political and ethical notions of inclusivity. And I, I stated back then that my fear was that um, the machine learning systems or the algorithmic systems may not understand much about um, uh, some of the issues that Sarah so, so wonderfully mentioned, age, flesh, gender, race, color, yeah, uh, emotional experiences that are happening within the experience. And my colleagues, uh, also Garrett, so beautifully addressed this notion of becoming, because we are, not, we are not fixed identities that move or behave, but we are always, in a sense, in a change. And so for me right now, 
especially in this era of the interpandemic where we had to undergo numerous changes in, in realization of our relationship to the world. How are we becoming now a part of an ethical responsibility challenge? So I end here. I know that some of my colleagues in dance have become very attuned to ethical political questions. And maybe that's something we can address, how computation uh, behaves towards ethics. Mm -hmm. Great, thank uh, you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Johannes. Um, it's good to hear these again and also hear updates. Um, I also won't read mine. Um, it seems it certainly seems like a different time 2018 um, and when I look back at this um, I also see a certain tendency in my own thought and practice um, that I think I sort of had to go through um, which was polemical in some ways um, of course this was called a provocation so I, I felt uh, authorized to to in, uh, indulge that polemic um, but certainly at the time in 2018 uh, there was what I observed was a lot of sort of cargo cult, uh, technocratic rhetoric that, uh, you know, we actually needed to sort of think about social systems, social interactive systems um, as things which can be tuned and um, can produce new sorts of social and political outcomes. So I'm thinking of like Cambridge Analytica and social media, right? So I mentioned Silicon Valley um, in here. And the question of capture um, was something that um, allowed me to sort of um, observe some parallel tendencies in, in media art um, and in, in particular uh, also in, in, in gestural media art. Um, and so I, I centered the, the question of intention. There's a, of course this text ca capturing intention uh, that's involved many people from the MoCo community uh, maybe even some of you, I don't know actually who all is involved in this. Um, I, I thought also this was a very provocative claim um, that we could be able to capture intention and something that I wanted to push against um, and suggest, you know, of course, this is not something that can be represented. So so to be, to be clear, um, computation here functions as a system of representation as Johannes and others have already suggested. Um, representation is is something which both exceeds becoming and becoming exceeds representation um, in different ways. So I, at the time I sort of wanted to argue for engaging with technology as um, technologies of performance, things which are processual, which are uh, articulatable. And I think uh, this has to do also with the intellectual and artistic community that I'm sort of surrounded by. Um, and I'd say maybe the 2020 update is um, one which now indulges with a bit of moderation, um, which is to think about what computers can't do still and be reminded of this, um, but also to think carefully still about what computers can do, right? And what they do very well is represent. Um, and this also sort of ties into a progression by thinking about philosophers like Deleuze and Guattari, and I mentioned this on the Discord, right, is that there's a certain impulse in, in that work, and for those who are familiar with it, you know this, right, where you can get taken up by uh, the lines of flight uh, that they, they throw into the mix, uh, the smooth space, the nomadic war machine. Um, but I think they're very clear, right, that these these are not enough, right? Those aren't enough to save us. We have to start thinking about those systems uh, as part of uh, those sort of concepts like the smooth space um, in conjunction with um, striation, in conjunction with um, management, in conjunction with systemization, right? Categorization, representation. Um, so yes, I, so what I would be interested in to visit this again is to think about capture and escape more dynamically. Mm. Complex terminology, uh, Gary. Uh, I just wrote in the chat striation. Are these Deleuzean terms? I don't. I never hear about those. But I guess uh, you are looking at 
different scales maybe or uh, i don't know is it a social a social issue for you this technology of performance yeah that's a great question and um i, I guess i Maybe it's good to put a little jargon in the mix. It gets the conversation started. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to alienate anybody this oh, way. I hate so it. I... it's alienating guy. <laughs> <laughs> so a striation, so like a cut or any kind of line. Um, so if you have a perfectly smooth space, right? You know, a, a snow blind, right? You're in the snow and you can't see anything. It's perfectly symmetrical. Um, to make a cut in that, right? Uh, some hair lands on your glasses, right? Then the space has been cut in some ways. It's been striated. It's been drawn through. This breaks symmetry and creates actually, yeah, more complex asymmetry. Um, for Deleuze and Guattari, um, they think about Euclidean geometry as a kind of striation. It's a striated system and oppose that with Riemannian geometry, so like blobs, you know, and fields and waves um, and intensities and things which those sorts of systems, those ways of thinking exceed representation, exceed, uh, in fact, they have other systems of representation to use that. But yes, to answer your question about sociality, um, I think so. I, I think there's a way that, you know, thinking about the the ex the experience is the world is one which is um th there are i think when when we're talking about what exceeds computation what what we're passionate about or the lure is that unstriated becoming of experience in artistic experience for example um, but also in social experience but uh, to, so to to ask Sarah, Sarah, would you think that's an ethical question of inclusion and exclusion? So just to understand exactly what uh, what uh, you mean by, by unstriated uh, space, meaning that it would be kind of a seamless integration or interdisciplinary dialogue uh, or a, a, a fusion of the value system behind these constructions into this kind of like um, technologically mediated pieces is that what you, what the what this ideal view would be uh yeah i think ideal is an important word because i think in fact it doesn't actually exist right i think That's, actually yeah. we're always making striations right um and there is a sort of ideal that we can think of we can we can indulge a different approach to technology which is field-based right and we see this in some of the streams here, there's paper in MOCO. There are papers written about this in the last few years, and I've authored some of them myself. Um, and I think there, there is, of course, a more analog, maybe thinking about analog and digital is another way to think about this, um, to resist putting in code certain kinds of categorizations, labels, um, is would be this sort of field-based, um, yeah, smooth approach to yeah. to tech, right? One which is 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 in fact simpler, right? In fact, dumber too, in a good way. Mm. So there are two things, if I may, um, that came to my mind about this. Um, and I was talking to Berta Bermudez, who was one of the uh, main people behind Capture and Intention, actually, yeah. and who is a close collaborator of mine, um, about basically the journey that she for 20 years have been have been going through in this integration of technology and capturing what dance is about and so on and the kind of epistemological dialogue that is in there and how there was a need in, a, in at a moment in time that dance would be translated into something else because perhaps this something else would shed a light on some kind of knowledge that was not visible otherwise. And that there has been a big change throughout for 20 years for her, 12 years for me, and the way in which we approach this kind of like knowledge building and what it means and, and, um, and, why, and why we're doing this at all. And I think there's value in also um, kind of for us at least 
uh, ground in this, this conversation into the, the history of our work within this field um, and what inspired us and, and so on. Uh, so I, I totally agree with the progression of that discourse and I can see it even from 2018 to now. And the other thing that um, I was thinking about when you were talking about this ideological non-friction, if can we can we talk about non-friction, ideological non-friction? It's it's it kind of reminds me of France Fanon's work, not in technology, not uh, performance based, but how he um, he considers in a way that uh, this non-frictional universal way of seeing humankind could be an ideal, but that he shifts from that by, by, by seeing the here and now and what the situation is uh, grounded into uh, the differences and um, dominant systems of, of, of thinking and of uh, uh, considering differences basically in a social um, environment um, that is really, that, that is a contrast, contrast with this non-fictional universalism in which he believes in a way. So I don't know, I, I, I don't know if that makes sense um, at all, or if I'm going a little rant, um, yeah. No, I, I do think this makes sense. I will say two things. I mean, the question, uh, Johannes has already um, bookmarked your question about outliers, which I love. I, I think that this is, this is actually maybe, this is also, I think this is what's at stake, right? Yeah. Um, and the the sort of beef with discretized systems, and this maybe excludes machine learning, maybe mach machine learning is in fact a special case. Um, with discretized systems is that you state ahead of time what you're looking for, right? And the idea I think behind um, thinking more field-based is that, well, we don't know what we're looking for, right? Um, in fact, we have some sort of field like we have a, you know, the corpus of a guitar, right, which can be tuned, right? We can kind of tune it as we go. Um, and it would be, I mean, the, this approach, I think, intends to um, care for difference and care for emergent differences. Yeah. And yet, yeah. yeah. I'll stop there. And but you were critiquing the predictive technological imposition of intention. If if someone already thinks they know what you intend, yeah, isn't that what you were critiquing about this uh, question of also, you know, um, uh, surveillance of processable intentionality? My God, data processing. You know, this is the ethical problem that I see. We are more and more extracted. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's frightening. Yeah. And think of the medical situation now in the pandemic, where, where people might have to be admitting I have been vaccinated, I have not been vaccinated. Yeah. And uh, what what implications do we face? Yeah. And, and this is also I think like by keeping things shallow, this is what Shin, Shashin Wei would, would say is that this is a semantically shallow approach to computation, one which doesn't have the labels and stuff. But this is also, it's also a, a tact of resistance insofar as um, uh, makes signals less easy to capture, signals that correlate with intention, um, mm. which, you know, of course, we're generating these all the time on social media, right? I, I tag myself here and there, so on. Yeah. So what, what does it mean to resist that? What does it mean to resist that then in a media system? Maybe surveillance is less at stake in artistic performance, but maybe not. I don't know. We have to let our moderators come in now. <laughs> <laughs> Questions to ask, yeah? Oh, thank you for I helping us moderate. Excellent. <laughs> the time is almost flowing. No, you're, you're correct. You're correct. We have, we have 10 minutes. It's perfect. It's perfect. Okay. I was going to perhaps just uh, go on with uh, saying that uh, an aspect of accepting to be an outlier in all sense of the word, whether yeah. on a personal level, uh, on, um, you know, background level, et cetera, et cetera, is also uh, the legitimacy to actually resist generalizability and to accept that that's not actually a goal and that to accept that that's not actually a target or an outcome or that's not what knowledge is about and that's not what practice 
uh, needs to tend to in order to, to legitimate itself. Um, and I think that's, that's um, perhaps one of the, one of the main, uh, yeah, one of the main uh, uh, progression for, for me at least is this um, um, possibility beyond the generalizability. It's great. I'm really interested in the questions about difference and differentiation that are coming up. Um, and I, I wonder, you know, going back to um, some aspects from your original provocations, even as your thinking has been changing, um, you know, there's this question of intention. And initially, in your old provocation, Garrett, you argued that we can't capture intention, but rather that we might sense aspects of intention through its effects through other sort of proxies inside of a system that was interesting to me and I wondered um, you know Sarah how perhaps that connected with some of your thinking about the body and the effects of the body and their presence slash absence inside of computational systems and um, I thought there was perhaps a, a parallel there between this question of effects and of bodies um, but I think also these questions about difference and differentiation, I think we can also apply those to how we understand the boundaries of bodies and the boundaries of effects in relation to bodies. Yeah. Um, perhaps for me, what, what I would say is that uh, that also relates to the idea of uh, um, bringing in what, what is captured and what escapes. So it's, it seems as if what is captured is sometimes not what is intended but, but becomes something else that uh, is not necessarily, um, uh, is not in necessarily um, something we would go for, something we would predict, et cetera, but that would open up for a variety of possibilities as of, um, you know, uh, appropriation of tools, uh, disrupting the body, uh, even changing and affecting practice. And I think that, that is something we can uh, we can play with and mingle around, um, and that also accepts differentiation uh, and differences. Uh, what escapes is actually pretty obvious to me, and, and as I said, it's in my my provocation. It becomes really uh, an idea of in, intentionality, flesh, experience, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. I don't know if that actually addresses exactly the question, but kind of. Yeah, I think, um, I guess two things, just sort of to respond to Sarah, I, I think, um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the Discord, but I'm in, in sort of moving away from my own old polemic, there's um, more and more, I, I have this recognition of, of again, like what's possible and also what, what escapes. And I don't know if I mentioned Whitehead, Alfred North Whitehead, but he has a wonderful quote and his whole, his whole project, he was a mathematician come philosopher um, and his whole, I mean, has a massive project, but um, he sort of summed it up as, as trying to um, create an account of the world that values equally um, how a sensor would see a sunset, capture a sunset, and how a painter would describe a sunset, or something like this, or maybe a math mathematician's description of a sunset, right? And this sort of like, un and so he's thinking about this as a sort of unbifurcated um, ontology or way of seeing the world. Um, and I think this is, I think that, I see that in the spirit of what you're saying, Sarah, that there's something which can be played with here. Right. And I think that that's also something which th this notion of play is something that um, probably many of us have all held on to for a long time. Um, and then the other question that I sort of brought was about, you know, who's doing the chat that capture. And I think this is also this becomes um, this becomes the ethical question right away. Um, and it, to go back to what Teoma brought up. There's something of, like that I had written, and I don't know if I still agree with this, right? But like that you can't capture intention; you can only like do some signals, which then are heuristics for intention. Um, 
uh, I don't know. I mean, if I'm if I'm being provocative again today, maybe that's as close as a uh, as we'll get to actually understanding what intention is, right? I mean, as close as maybe you know a philosopher is not going to get closer. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that's a provocative thing to say. Um, but I'm looking now at my old provocation and trying to think. In here, I'm trying to say we should resist trying to capture intention. And, and now I look at this and I'm sort of laughing because I think, I wonder if I've captured my own intention here in this provocation two years ago, right? And there's a way that I think that's what I was resi resisting. I look at an old snapshot of myself, an old photo, right? And you think, oh, wow, like, it's a, I, there's a difference or a friction with being captured in this way. Right, and now I'm sort of differencing with myself, um, but I think also I've done this capture. Right, I didn't need to go and make this thing, um, and it becomes a very different question when, yeah, when you start bringing questions of consent and much larger social media systems, right, um, mm -hmm. but also art, art systems, public art systems. And don't you dare talk about my mother. <laughs> Wasn't that a line from Blade Runner that caused a problem in the beginning? Uh, sorry. Uh, no, I mean, um, I think it's our time is running out. This is very sad because we're just getting warmed up. And um, uh, it's very, very uh, fascinating to bring in this question, I think, of, of, the, of the ethics. I, I can't help repeating myself. I, I just started this research on different abilities and mixed abilities and disabilities and the question of what is actually disability if mm -hmm. people within the community of disabled people actually do not use the term yeah mm -hmm. and uh, and then capturing different kinds of perception possibilities of people with different yeah perceptory systems it's so complicated to then link that back to computation yeah mm. I mean, in, in, in Sarah's sense of a, of a body experiential being yes. coming. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, perhaps um, uh, just a little comment about um, uh, the machine actually capturing the, the sunsets. I think that's really interesting because at the end of the day, it, the question is what interests us with these, what, with these technologies? And I think that um, we have, uh, underlooked what they can do in a way that is not about uh, about approaching our cognitive and embodied capacities. And it's so boring, basically, that these machines are trying to do what we do because they don't do it well. And there are so many assumptions into what we do that are imbued in them and that are actually not interesting. Whereas if we go on with, with the machine being the machine, and seeing that sunset in a total different way, then that's interesting me, because that becomes this um, notion of otherness that interests me in the same way that I'm looking at uh, my son who is one year old, who is other, because his experiences are completely different from whatever I can perceive mm -hmm. of this world, etc. Or that becomes around this idea of someone who has a completely different ability uh, that Joannes was saying, and that otherness is creative, is actually generative of idea. I can learn from that. I can, uh, I, I, I can displace myself with that. I can, and these frictions become not unethical, but they become generative and creative. And I think we have we have under um, perhaps underexplored that. And perhaps that was a very engineering perspective of computation that has imposed on us this interest in learning in the way the human learn, dancing in the way the human dance, perceiving in the way the human perceives, etc. Um, and I think that's also part of part of this whole Silicon Valley discourse that normalizes ways in which computation function and narrows down the possibilities, whereas we could get rid of these these um, walls and explore different options with it without feeling feeling constrived by it and i had felt constrived by it in many many opportunities uh, and resisted technologies for that purpose um, 
Whereas on the other hand, and I think that's what Scott La Hunter and others are now doing in the ethics and AI research, they think the body has much to contribute and give and you know, to um, uh, AI and learning yeah, from machines, if the machine engineers would be more attuned to mm -hmm. listen to bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're just about um, at time. And, um, and I just want us to, to thank you guys. This is a super interesting discussion. I think part of the idea of bringing these provocations together for us is to try to look at sort of the boundaries for each of us of our own situatedness and thinking about you know how do how we how do we think about difference are we defining difference in relation to some sort of norm of what constitutes a body or ability um, or differences between the fields associated with movement and computing etc so in having a discussion of these provocations through one another, I think we also get to see part of our own sort of intentions and desires um, for the kind of systems and relationships that we build. Um, I want to leave just space if there's any final comment and we'll move towards wrapping up. So as, oh yeah, go ahead. As Johannes was saying, it's like really just the start of so many ideas I would love to discuss with each of you more. Um, but of course, we the also escape. We have, we have to talk about the escape, ha the escape hatch. <laughs> the escape hatch, I love it. I think also that at one point Garrett, Garrett said, what exceeds computation. And I thought that was also an interesting provocation. Um, so these are definitely discussions we want to continue. We can do so in part on the Discord channel. And I meant to mention at the beginning that we're having this, we're coming together and revisiting these provocations in the context of Slow Moco. So we'll post some information about that. Um, and this originally started as part of the conference on movement and computing back in 2018. So it has a sort of ongoing history and we appreciate all of that support and community surrounding it and all the people involved. Uh, online as well. Jessica, was there final uh, final words? No, I think you wrapped it up beautifully. So thank you. And thank you, Sarah, Johannes and Garrett for being with us today. Um, this is really, really exciting. And like, like Tama said, part of this larger process. Um, for those of you who've watched, thanks for watching. And um, we'll have some information below the video on how to connect to the other work that we're doing. And uh, we hope you tune back in for other conversations that we'll be having. So thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you all for all. taking the time. That was a real pleasure. Thank you all three. And, and we'd love to continue this conversation, perhaps in MoCo, real life MoCo, <laughs> next time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody.